Welcome to another episode of You're Weird, written by Kate Peterson, aka the Dapper Jackalope. Ah yes, welcome back to another episode of You're Weird. In today's episode, I'll be working on Build Your Own Spirit Animal. Your spirit animal is the animal who best represents your characteristics and personality. But being the weirdos we are, why limit ourselves to animals that already exist? Combine these animal building blocks or create your own from scratch to capture your particular brand of peculiarity. Oh man, this one was so much fun to work on. Um, also, if you happen to have noticed, yes, this prompt for your weird is coming out an entire week early. I usually like to do these on the first Friday of every month, but seeing as next Friday, although it is November 1st, I'm going to be doing an Inktober tour since I've been working on Inktober the entire month of October. So that means Weird Part 7 gets to come out to you guys an entire week early. Lucky you. So, a little bit more about this prompt. The definition of a spirit animal, well, I didn't really know, so I had to look it up on Google. The first result from dictionary.com is, in certain spiritual traditions or cultures, Spirit animal refers to a spirit which helps guide or protect a person on a journey and whose characteristics that person shares or embodies. It is also a metaphor, often humorous, for someone or something a person relates to or admires. Yeah, um, I, that's about as much as I know about spirit animals too, and mostly I thought it would be fun to just sort of create my own animal. So that was a big thing I focused on, and I just sort of thought about different shapes and features of animals that I like. Also, yes, please um, forgive my tiny little nub of a white eraser that I was using for this. My oval eraser decided to break into pieces, and so I'm trying to use up the smallest ones first. Yeah, that was a sad part of my day. But anyway, back to these uh, animal sort of pieces I'm putting together. I knew I, like, I really like circles. I just find them very aesthetically pleasing. So that was the base I started with. I also really like animals that have that sort of, like, haunch leg. I'm probably saying that wrong. But I just, I like an animal with a thick back leg, sort of like a horse or a dog. Like, they have a thick leg and it sort of, like, bends almost like their knee or foot or whatever is bending backwards a little bit. Not quite like a bird, it's not quite the same, but something similar to that, that was what I was going for. And I didn't really know what to put for feet, so I just gave them little nubs, because I do love a good nub. Then I added just this curvy little neck. This is basically how I draw necks if I'm drawing like a flamingo, and I just thought that would be fun. Uh, if you happen to hear construction noises in the background, by the way, I'm so sorry. They're destroying roads outside, and I can't stop them, and I wish I could. Hopefully you just don't hear them, though, and I'm just talking nonsense. Oh, no. Yeah, you can probably hear that in the background. Oh, it's getting louder. Great. Fantastic. Uh, construction's great. All right. Back to this prompt. Let's try and get through this before they get even louder. So the neck that I drew is basically like what I draw if I'm drawing a flamingo. I like its sort of S-curve shape, and since, the, you know, my name is Shenanigans figured a little S-curve shape in this animal would make sense. I gave him a little ovular head because I like a nice spherical head. So that was the base I started with, but eventually I had to give him a snout because I just thought he would look a little bit cuter with that. And I'm saying he a lot. This could be a he or she or a gender fluid or some other version character. I haven't really decided. Part of me kind of wants him to be a he just because once I start coloring him, he he would look, typically, he would seem a bit more feminine, at least in an American culture, and I just kind of like that. I like that gender stereotype breaking. So yeah, um, I'll talk more about the colors a little bit later. But for this guy, I wanted to give him some nice ears, and I really like bunnies, so I based the ears sort of off of like bunny ears, but a bit wider. And I had to give him antlers because I just thought it would look too cute. I gave him a nice big fluffy tail, just like a bunny, but like gigantic. Like his tail's basically the size of his body. And I added some of that same fluff right to the top of his head to hide where his antlers attached to his scalp. I really enjoy drawing this character. 
I also had to give him some nice little nubby arms like a T-Rex because I just thought it was goofy and I liked it. So if I'm going to think about this animal in a way of like, how do they relate to me or what characteristics do we share or however spirit animals are supposed to work? Well, this character has nice full hips, a much thicker lower body, body than upper body, and that, I guess, resembles me. I definitely have more of a pear shape. So, sure, we can go with that. I don't have gigantic ears or little nubs for feet, but, you know, it's close, right? Um, yeah, he also does have two eyes. I just couldn't draw both of them on this, so I guess that's something else we share in common. I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess if I'm going to describe this animal, it's sort of like a combination of, like, a bunny and a deer and a dinosaur and you know now that I'm looking at it a little bit more I kind of wish that I gave him wings that would have been really fantastic oh well it's maybe his ears can let him fly like Dumbo see maybe he's like part magical elephant I don't know I really liked working on this prompt though it was a lot of fun just sort of piecing together my own animal and I like all these individual pieces of an animal and honestly it came together a lot better than I expected I like a lot of sort of weird animals uh one that I didn't include in this that happens to be my favorite is a narwhal I love narwhals but I couldn't quite figure out how to add any pieces in yeah I probably could have given him like a narwhal horn except narwhal horns are technically teeth so it would look weird if it was coming out of its forehead instead of its mouth and well I just wasn't feeling that so I love narwhals, but it's just not represented in this prompt very well. But I do like how this weird sort of creature animal turned out. I think he's pretty cool. I, I think I've decided he's going to be a he. I like it. It works for me. He also is going to end up looking pretty cute and weird, but he's feisty. Oh, you know, if I look at him to the side a little bit, he kind of looks like a kangaroo. There's a it's like a kangaroo with a really chonky lower body and long, thin neck. That's, yeah. It's kind of like a kangaroo and a jackalope, I guess. I don't know. I like it. This was really fun to work on. Honestly, even if you don't have this book, I recommend just doing this. Piecing together your own animal. Build it off of your favorite animals. It's a lot of fun. And figuring out the colors for it was even more fun because... I could just pick out a color scheme I liked. I didn't have to think about, oh, what colors exist in nature? What colors are these animals normally? I didn't need to worry about that. So I made him a nice aqua blue green color because it happens to be my favorite color. I added some salmon pink as an accent because I just really like that color with this aqua color. And I added in some brown details because I just thought it was a little bit of a nice neutral to add in to sort of ground him a bit since he has this vibrant color of an animal. But it's okay. He doesn't need to use camouflage. He's brightly colored because, secret, he happens to be poisonous. Yep. So his colors are actually a warning for other creatures that, oh no no, he might look like cotton candy, but you shouldn't need him because he's poisonous. I don't know why I felt like sing-songing that. You're welcome for that impromptu chorus. Oh man, I love these prompts. I keep getting weirder and weirder as I go on. And yes, to address something that has been a part of this video from the very beginning, that um, sheet of paper that's covering the right-hand side of this book, I know I often do two pages in one video, but not today. Oh, no, 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 because next episode is a special episode. If uh, you were wondering why that white piece of paper is covering it, it's because I don't want to give any sneak previews. If you happen to have this book, you already know what's on this page. Good for you. If you don't have this book and want to know what's on this page, and, you know, you can't just wait until episode 8, well, you could go out and buy the book yourself. I happen to have all those links linked down below. Go check out the author, Dapper Jackalope. She's fantastic and weird and has amazing things. She currently has these, like, paint-your-own ornaments, and there's a narwhal one, and I keep trying to convince myself that I definitely need a millionth ornament to add to my collection. It's probably going to happen because it's just fantastic. But yeah, if you want a sneak preview of what's going to happen for next episode, you can go ahead and get the book yourself and find out. But, um, you know, if you feel like you can wait or 
you just can't go out and get the book, it's fine. Episode 8 will happen. If you're seeing this in the future, maybe episode 8's already out. Who knows? But stay tuned for that one, because it's going to be quite different from most of the other ones that I filmed. I'm doing a lot more for it, and I cannot wait. I've already actually started on this video, even though it probably won't be going up for another month. Maybe it'll go out sooner. You guys let me know in the comments below if you want it out sooner. Maybe I can make that happen. I don't know why I had to say that in such a sketchy sounding voice, but there you go. Oh, and yes, one more thing about my spirit animal. He definitely is one of my protectors and guides in life. I've decided he's he's not exactly like a guardian, but he protects me because he's poisonous. So he keeps all the evil away. So, you know, if you're a bad person out there and plan to do bad things, this spirit animal's gonna get you to keep me safe i yeah i don't i don't know i just felt like saying that and yes to color in this i'm just using some basic crayola colored pencils and of course posca paint pens these things are so much fun i actually recently just got a couple new colors to add into my collection i'm very excited to start working on a couple different pieces with them and just playing around with them i just i really like how they work they're a lot of fun they are kind of pricey, but I would say they're reasonably affordable. You know, I'm not going out and buying the entire collection or anything, but they're not the most expensive. I guess that's sort of a relative thing. Expensive depends on how much income you have to spend on this sort of stuff. Lucky me, it gets to be part of my profession, so yay. I will also say for a majority of my artistic career... I was using Crayola, like, for well over 50% of the time I've been working on art, and it's been, like, 20 years. Most of that time has been working with the cheapest supplies I could find, like Crayola, the occasional black Sharpie that I could sneak on out of my parents' desk or borrow from a friend for a while. I was using basic, you know, mechanical pencils, pink erasers, all of that stuff. Just because you have cheap supplies doesn't mean you can't make great art. It might mean you have some more challenges to work with, but you also learn a lot more that way. So whenever you eventually can work up to some nicer products, you already know some of the struggles that you've had and you know how to overcome them so well. So the minimal struggles you might have with some nicer art supplies, they're not going to slow you down at all. So don't feel bad if you feel like you can't afford the nicest of products. You don't need them. All you need is your imagination and hopefully time that I know is not always accessible, but just time to practice, work on your art, do some weird stuff. Use that imagination. You don't even need any supplies for your imagination. You just have to have your brain on, think about some stuff, stare at some clouds, try and get off of your phone. I know it's hard for me too, but really, if you can get some space to just think, be by yourself, daydream about some stuff you can use your imagination and build your art skills that way, even without any supplies. Man, isn't that great? So this video is about over and it sounds like they're kicking on up with that construction outside. Lucky me. So I'm probably going to get going soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please like it down below. It also helps me a lot if you share this video and, you know, just let other people know about it, that you liked it so they can watch it too helps me out a lot, and it costs you nothing. If you want to see part number eight anytime sooner, let me know in the comments down below. If you aren't already, also make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, all those social medias, because I post a lot of updates on those things. Especially if you want to see more about Inktober, I post most of that stuff all on Instagram, so you can see my entire process through the month. Woo! All right, I think that's about all everything I have to say. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Try out this prompt if you feel like it. If you have this book and are following along, let me know in the comments below also. And any and all relevant links will be listed in the comments down below. Have a fantastic day, you guys. Thanks so much for watching my video. Bye.
want to see more shenanigans? Then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Oh, you want to see more shenanigans like right now? Then check out these suggestions on your screen or head on over to my Instagram. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Check back soon for some more shenanigans. Bye.